My name's Tim, and you're watching the Car Doctor Channel. Hey, welcome back. Got this 07 Trailblazer here. Came in on the hook. It's a no-start situation where the engine cranks but won't start. So we've connected the Solus Edge, and we pulled just a ton of codes out of it. Uh, one of them is a PO651, which is a five volt reference circuit problem. And I think that has to do with a lot of the other codes on this thing. Came in with a P0053, a P0060, a P0335, a P0651, a P1682, and a P2138. The P0053 and 60, that might be related to the head headlight driver module. Um, but these other ones may all be tied to the 5 volt reference circuit. This is actually the uh, P0651 is the number two VREF circuit, uh, either, you know, shorted to ground or shorted to voltage. Uh, it's supposed to be right at five volts. So the first thing we did is go to the data on the sensor data with the uh, Solus and we see where it's, uh, it's got like 0.2 volts. So this is a serious problem here, 0.43 volts, and that's supposed to be a 5 volt reference, just like the uh, REF1, REF2 should be the same. So commonly this code can be associated with one of the two sensors in the throttle body, sensor AP1 or AP2, uh, having a short to ground. Um, so the first thing I've done is pulled the uh, air in, intake duct and uh, the, the cover of the motor and access the throttle body, disconnecting it, and my voltage remains unchanged. So your second possible sensor is the throttle position sensor on the actual throttle pedal itself. I disconnected this as well and still have low voltage. All right, just to recap now, uh, we've isolated the fact that it is not the AP1 or AP2 sensor in the throttle body itself by disconnecting that connector and then monitoring the uh, V2 reference voltage. Uh, and then we've gone to the throttle pedal position under the uh, dash, uh, just above the throttle pedal. We've disconnected that sensor and alleviated that as a possibility. Now barring some type of short on the wiring harness itself, uh, we're left with the possibility of the crankshaft position sensor circuit uh, is being at fault. So uh, in order to verify if the crank position sensor is actually shorted internally and drawing this voltage down, uh, we're gonna have to disconnect that. And it happens to be sandwiched between the starter and the engine block. So there must be a reason why I waited until the last to do this. Uh, I forgot that you had to pull the starter to do that actually, but uh, here we are. So uh, now we're gonna uh, just disconnect the battery at this point pull the starter back enough to disconnect the sensor and then make sure my starter wiring isn't going to short to ground or anything and then reconnect the battery and then check our VREF voltage again. Okay, there's a sensor right up there connected with that shielded harness. You can barely see it. Try to get this disconnected. You can see a little better now. Push that connector off. Oh boy. There we go. Now just make sure that my starter isn't grounding out at all. And uh, then we'll lower it down and reconnect the battery and check our VREF voltage. OK, 
Okay, we've reconnected the battery and our reference voltage has come back in line. So, diagnosis is crank position sensor shorted internally, drawing down reference voltage. Okay, here's the deal. It calls for uh, 4.3 hours labor. Darn are the uh, crank position sensor on this. It includes removing the starter. Uh, but, you know, we've already dropped the starter down a little bit. It's a pain to, to get at. Uh, but uh, once you get the starter down and a little bit out of the way, you can access the crank position sensor from just above. You access it by uh, first, of course, removing the wiring connector from it. And then uh, if you've got your right front wheel removed from the vehicle, you pull up on this little rubber flap here and go just below the back of the uh, exhaust manifold, just in front of the header pipe. Uh, and, and I use a long, 3H drive extension with a wobble head 10 millimeter and you can just slip it between the header pipe and the manifold and it gets the block face and get on that bolt. And get it removed that way. Okay, here's the sensor that's been removed. And in this case, I definitely recommend using an OE part, uh, original equipment, Delco. It's not a really expensive part. Uh, it should be under 40 bucks for the sensor itself. And uh, get this swapped out. And as long as that clears everything up and it's running good, we'll want to do a crank variation relearn afterwards. Uh, and then hopefully get this thing sent down the road. Got stuck the replacement sensor on my magic fingers. And we're just going to try to snake it in here. Little assistance needed in aisle four. Beautiful. See if I can get my screw threaded in. Just stick it to my magnet. And tighten her down. Now we'll raise her up and uh, connect the sensor, get that starter plugged back in.
See if this thing starts up. Okay, before I do anything else, I'm gonna just double check our VREF2 voltage and see if we're in line there. Ref 2, 5 volts. That's looking pretty good. Well, let's give it a try. Once we uh, got it running here, I pulled it outside, got it up to a normal operating temperature and performed the crank variation relearn procedure and seems to be running pretty good. I monitored that VREF voltage and it's in line, it doesn't drop off at all uh, and no codes have been set. So I think we're good to go. Looks like a successful repair and I do appreciate you stopping by the shop and we will catch you next time. Take care.